In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a multi-screen bucket classifier with an axe. G'day, welcome to Mad Scientist Prospecting. My name is Stuart Chignall, and uh, this channel is called Mad Scientist Prospecting because some of the things I do and the way I go about doing them are a little crazy, like building a bucket classifier with an axe. If you've been watching the recent videos I've done, you would have, might have seen some comments from Craig, one of my subscribers, who offered me a whole stack of buckets. No, I don't remember that. Are you sure it was recently? Well, it's thanks to Craig that I've got the buckets to make these bucket classifier. Now, the reason it is more make a bucket classifier with an ax is because I am gonna use an ax to do the cutting of the bucket. Now, this is not done for clickbaiting purposes. Really? You expect us to believe that? Okay, there is an element, but the real reason is I like axes, but also because this ax is one of the best tools I've got to do this job because you want something that is very sharp and that you have a great deal of control over. Cutting this plastic is tricky and you might have heard that a safe knife is a sharp knife. Well, that's because the sharper your edge is, the less force you have to do to make your cut. And with this plastic, it is very hard to cut, which means you need to put a fair bit of force into it and then you can suddenly find that it will cut quickly and that's when accidents happen you will need less force if your blade is very, very sharp. And sharpening things is one of the things I do reasonably well. Um, and well, if you, you'd know that if you've been around this channel because you'd know that I've recently had a haircut and you might have seen the tool that the haircut was done with, but I don't do sharpening on this channel, that's for my woodworking channel. The other reason for using this ax is that not only is it incredibly sharp, but the, the shape, and the long handle means I'm going to have a fair bit of control when I do the cutting. Now, as I was doing the edit, I thought I'd put some comments in about other tools because you might not have a really sharp axe. Other tools you could use, probably the best one that you would commonly have already is some sort of Stanley knife with a, with a new blade. Uh, you might be tempted to use a jigsaw. Personally, I wouldn't because uh, this might happen. I didn't do that cutting the buckets, I did that cutting some other plastic. This stuff's a lot uh, thicker than a bucket, so it's, it's too thick for the axe. You really do need to use a saw for this. Now, I'm not saying don't use a jigsaw, uh, especially if you're familiar with using jigsaws, it might be the best option you've got. Just be really careful because the plastic's very thin and flexible, the surface isn't even, and if it grabs or moves away from the foot plate of the jigsaw, it could end in disaster, like it came close to doing with me when I was cutting this much thicker, easier to cut plastic. So yeah, be careful. And we want to cut out most of the bottom of the bucket because the more of the bucket that's removed and the more hole there is for our material that we're classifying to pass through. However, we can't cut it all out because we need some plastic in there to support the screens, otherwise the screens will just fall through, which kind of defeats the purpose. Now I'm going to leave a rim around the outside of the bucket, but I'm also going to leave uh, two pieces cross of material in the middle of the bucket to support the screens. Now with big chunky screens, you probably don't need that material, but I want to use some relatively fine mesh in this bucket classifier. So I need those central supports to keep the mesh you know, supported so it you know, can do its job. Now, because I've got them, I'm gonna be using a set of dividers, but you could use a piece of wood with two screws or nails in it at the right spacing to scribe a circle in the bottom of the bucket to, mount, to, to mark out the rim that you wanna leave of the bucket. Uh, then I'm going to use um, my square, which is Japanese square, draw where the, the straps that I'm going to leave. And just for convenience sake, I'm going to use the width of the square because it's a nice narrow width. That's just what I've got to hand. The next thing I'm going to do is drill holes at all of the corners where the two cuts need to meet. Now to drill those holes, you want to use a spade bit. Uh, just the way they score, as they cut, you're going to get a better result than you are with a twist bit or well, really any other sort of bit. An auger bit would be a really bad idea. Now you haven't seen much of me lately because well, I haven't been very well. And one of the aspects of that is that when things went wrong, um, I wasn't able to kind of step over them and adjust and you know cope. Uh, so, so when the sound went on this footage, I just didn't make the video. What I'm doing here is I've just got to cut out along the lines uh, to link up the holes that I've drilled with the spade bit. And this is where the axe really, really works well. It's very, very sharp. 
but also the long handle and the curved blade gives me a lot of control over the cut as I'm going. But you'll see there's a few times where even so it slips a little bit and runs a little bit. And if I had my finger in the way or if I hadn't already drilled those holes, it'd be very easy to overcut the hole. And if you've got an overcut on where the straps and the rim meet each other, it creates a weak point, which means that the bucket won't last as long. Now, if you've got someone like Craig to give you buckets, that's not a big deal because you just, you know, just make another one. Um, but if you can avoid it, it's a good idea. Now that we've got the holes cut out, um, we need our mesh. Now I'm going to be using a range of mesh from stuff that I've already cut, um, but also going to see what I've got in my mesh stash. Now I think this is a number one mesh that I've got over there. Um, and this is, um, I think like a one and a half mesh. And then I've got this stuff, which I'm pretty sure is a number two mesh. And I've also got some finer meshes in the shed. But anyway, let's cut them out. Now observant viewers would notice I use the outside of the bucket to mark the mesh before I cut it, which would mean that when I go to put it in the bucket, it's oversized. That was deliberate. And the reason for that is that it means that when it comes time to push it into the bottom of the bucket, it's going to deform and all the little wire cut ends from the wire cutters are going to grip on the bucket and hold it in place. And this means that as we're bouncing the bucket up and down uh, with the potato in it, the, the mesh isn't going to go up and down. It does mean, however, that there might be a few gaps around the edge where larger pieces of material can skirt the mesh and go through. This doesn't matter. Prospect is what we're doing most of the time is we're not classifying. What we're doing is just getting rid of the big and the boring. And because we're not classifying that material into different classifications, all we're trying to do is getting rid of the big and the boring. It doesn't matter if a few bits and pieces slip through. What matters is how quickly and efficiently we can do this process. So having made it, it was time to take it out into the forest and give it a test run. Lucky! Lucky, come here, boy. Peach. bit harder with this wider shovel. Hey Annalise, can I have my trail back? Okay, do you want the big one or this one? Thank you. There we go. And now we're going to take this mesh out. And put the final one in. go into this bucket. Just do a little bit at a time. This is where I'd really like a monster because it's possible that there could be pickers in that lot. Bit too much at a time, I think. In hindsight, I reckon I jumped up a mesh too quickly. So if I was doing more, I'd pour off the water into the next bucket and then I would continue. Thanks once again to Craig for providing the buckets for this bucket classifier. If you're wondering how much gold was in that sample, well, I would love to show you. We don't really get black sand the way a lot of people do in a lot of areas. The video in the recording failed. The sound's still there, but the video's gone. There's that big speck, which is almost a picker. And it's one of the things that sort of held me up from doing this video. And in the end, I just said, ah, oh, stuff it. I'm going to do the video, get it done, get it out there. 
Um, so I hope you enjoyed. I will be going back to that spot if you want to see how good it was for golf because it had some very interesting fluid dynamics things going on, which I think could mean it was a really good spot for concentrating uh, gold in a particular location. We're going to be checking that out, you know, at some time. Now, if you want to support the channel a bit, you could do the you know, little things like hit the like button, or even uh, even better is you put a comment in the description, which it can be just be great, awesome, well done, or you suck. All stuff like that helps the algorithm notice the video and helps that means that more people see it, which helps build the channel. If you want to support in a more material way, that would be awesome too, because if I can get this channel to a point where it's kind of cost neutral, then it's going to allow me to be more free to you know, put petrol in the car and drive down the road and stuff. And for that, I've put a link to Patreon in, you know, in the description below. So hope you enjoy. Look forward to seeing you in the next video and uh, we'll catch you anon. Bye.